Hello, and welcome to the Vision Led Leadership Podcast. I am your host, Erin Fugate. On the show, we talk about everything entrepreneurship, but we also talk about listening to your intuition and building a business that feeds your soul. I'm super excited to bring this guest to you today because I've been following her on Instagram for quite a while, and I always love her content, and I know the wisdom she's going to bring to us today will help us in our business and our life in general. So today we have Alejandra Brady. She is the creator of What Should I Feng Shui Today? This is an Oracle card deck, and she's also the author of the best-selling book, I Just Can't Make This Shit Up. Welcome to the show, Alejandra. Hi, Erin. Thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. Very happy to be here. Before we dive into feng shui, I think we're going to talk about crystals. There might be some essential oil goodness that comes up. We want to get to know you. So the famous icebreaker questions. First of all, you ready? Bring them on. (laughs) I kind of wish I had like a a card deck or dice and I could have these random questions. (laughs) That could be a good idea. I actually pulled a question from my card deck for everyone. So we'll get to that after the icebreakers. Perfect. Okay. So you need a hype song. You're about to go on stage. Maybe you're feeling tired and you have to go feng shui a house. What kind of music do you put on? So... That's such a good question because I love all music and I'm a child of the 80s. So I grew up with actually really good music, bad hairstyles, great music. Um, But to this day, my favorite hype up song is Don't Stop Me Now by Queen with Bruno Mars coming in and Uptown Funk a pretty close second. But uh, anything that gets me dancing. I danced for many, many years all through, you know, the end of high school, ballet, Spanish dance, all that. So anything that gets me dancing, I love. But Don't Stop Me Now has kind of become my own personal little theme song in my head. <laughs> and oh, Queen is so good. H, I think that's what I'm going to use. I don't know if I'll use it at the beginning or at the end, but I'm going to use it. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's a great one. I love it. Okay, so snacks. What you were telling me are gluten-free. So what's the best gluten-free snack you have? I am gluten-free and dairy-free due to an autoimmune. So not by my choice, but uh, it's actually great. It's actually really healthy and it's kept me really healthy. So I've been doing that since I was 50. So five years I've been gluten-free and dairy-free. Um, there is a bakery right by us that's amazing and they are gluten-free, dairy-free. So anytime I need some sugar, um, my husband will, if, or if I'm having a bad day, he'll suddenly show up with a little bag for me. <laughs> so he knows, cause I can eat everything in there and that's rare. I usually just don't eat a lot of snacks. Um, if I'm salty, if I'm going salty, I love potato chips. I love ruffles, the plain ones. And I love the, I don't know the name of it. It's got the Buddha on it. Um, but it's popcorn and it's the salty and sweet kettle corn, but the Buddha on it. And oh my God, I can eat a bag of that in a city. Those are like, I can see that popcorn, but I cannot figure out the name. It's like Himalayan something. Um, but I can't, I cannot remember. Somebody will probably pop in at some point and mention it, but, uh, um, yeah, those are, those are kind of my go-tos that when I really need something, but having that bakery less than 10 minutes from my house is good and bad. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, I don't know. They're not just here. They might be all over the place. They're called Hale Life Bakery, H-A-L-E-L-I-F-E. So if anyone's got those in their towns, I mean, they're amazing. Check them out. Yeah. I should be gluten-free and I try the inflammation in my body just melts after seven days gluten-free, all of a sudden my clothes fit better. My wedding ring fits better. Um, and I have been learning how to bake. I was never a baker. Um, but I have two kids that love, you know, treats. And we found this woman on Instagram called paleo running mama. Have you ever heard of her? No, but I'm writing it down. She's got the best recipes, not just sweets, but she does have a whole cookbook of paleo, um, baked goods and they're absolutely delicious. So, uh, I just tried making tahini chocolate chip cookies totally mm. gluten free, and the kids love them. And I'm always, that's what I'm trying to do is like the kids love treats. So let's get healthy stuff in the, sure. treats. uh, and it's been fun. So anyone listening, we want your gluten free and your dairy free recipes. Share yeah. it with both of us on Instagram. Please got, do, do so it. I'm a- I get- <laughs> yeah, I love to cook. So I cook a lot. 
my soon to be daughter-in-law because my son's uh, almost 28. So my soon to be daughter-in-law loves to bake and she bakes gluten-free, dairy-free. So we end up being a really nice combination when they're visiting because I'll make dinner and she'll make dessert. But when she's not here, we don't get dessert. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, we've come a really long way. Gluten-free used yeah. to take like cardboard and now you yeah. can get good stuff. Okay, final icebreaker question. You have the opportunity to sit down for coffee or tea with anyone alive or already passed. Who would you choose? Ooh, 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 ooh. okay. You know who I really think I'd love to talk to is Professor Lin. He is the gentleman who brought feng shui to the Western world. And my teacher trained directly under him. And anytime I work with any feng shui teacher, you know, the, at the master level, they're always like, the professor taught us this and professor taught us that. And I'm like, I would really have liked to have met professor. You know, I think it would have been amazing to be taught directly by him or just to have his insights because I love this. This is obviously my passion now. And I love that I get to combine it with my other passion, which is design and now biophilic design too. I'm getting certified in that. Um, but I'd love to hear from him how he took such a traditional approach in China and made it so that the Western world would embrace it. I just think that'd be amazing to have had that opportunity to meet him at some point in time. I agree. I love the idea of being able to connect with those original masters. And mm -hmm. recently, I've really been playing around with this daily meditation practice where I call in my spirit guides, my higher mm -hmm. power, my guardian angels. And you just made me think, what would happen if I called in a master teacher of something I wanted to learn? Like, I wonder oh. if their essence would kind of follow us around. Um, a lot of my friends swear that they still hear Wayne Dyer's voice in their head, that they listened or learned something under him and that they feel like his essence is still around and he's still guiding and teaching them. So I'm sure you can do that. I believe it. I might add that to my practice yeah. for saying that. Okay. So feng shui, yes. I first want to tell you a little bit about my experience with feng shui, and then I want to hear all of your wisdom. So my husband, I've been married to him for seven years. He, uh, he went through a feng shui training. So when we started oh. dating, this, I don't know if you'll laugh at this or, or what it was around the lunar new year, which I know we're, we're getting um, close right to this. There. And he said, so I have to do this orange peel ceremony. And I'm like, okay, you know, I think it's just whatever. And he made me sit and peel like hundreds of oranges. And we had to like this whole ritual. And I just went, whoa, I thought this was going to be like burning sage. This is serious. And he still makes me do this stuff. Yet we have a five acre property. So the things that he makes us do, which now I appreciate because it really makes such a huge difference in our home, but I had no idea it was so in depth. And I also had no idea that it could make such a big impact on your living space. So tell us in your words, what is feng shui and why should people learn about it? Sure. I have a quick question for you though. Do you know what style of feng shui he's trained in? Okay. He like has told me, I feel like it's something maybe with the word black in it. Maybe. Yeah. So he's the same as me. It's BTB feng shui, black sec tantric feng shui. Yes. So, okay, yes. which is the more westernized approach. So Yes, because there's landform and then, you know, there's the compass school where people where the practitioners will walk around with a compass on your, you know, on your land and, um, and then there's ours. So, okay. So oh, cool. Good. Well, he'll love to connect with you. That's great. To yeah, know. that'd be fun. I'd love to do that. So feng shui. So the most basic definition is a literal translation. Feng means wind, shui means water in Chinese, because it is a Chinese practice that depending on the textbook dates back somewhere between four and 6,000 years. And, you know, as my teacher liked to say, it's basically 6,000 years of common sense, you know? Um, so feng, which equals to wind also equals energy because wind creates energy, right? If you think about windmills and all that, Shui, which equals to water, running water in feng shui equals prosperity. So the entire point of feng shuiing 
a home, an office, a space, your desk, your bedroom, whatever it is that you're feng shuiing, is to create that balance and that harmony between energy and prosperity and creating the optimal environment for that to prosper in. So that's that's kind of the point. And you can do it through, you know, if he's trained, then the same as me, we can do it through cures like the oranges, you know, more esoteric cures. And we can do it through more mundane cures and enhancements, which means I'm putting this orchid in this corner for this reason. So it's a balance of both. Everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, a lot of people mistake feng shui for like, oh, we move the furniture around and everything's going to change in my life. Not really. You know, feng shui wants you to work with it as well. And you have to set intentions. And I'm sure he feels the same way. It's super intentional. So everything we're doing is with the utmost of intention. And that I think, and I feel deeply is what makes the cures and the enhancements work, you know, because if, if you're doing it, but not really paying attention to why you're doing it and what it is that you want to change, it may not come out as good as it could come out for you. Mm. You know, I also like to tell people what feng shui is not. And I do this a lot because people get very confused. I actually just met with somebody yesterday for lunch and they're like, well, what if, I don't believe that stuff. I'm like, it's not a belief system. So feng shui is not a belief system, a religion, anti-religion, witchcraft, woo-woo. It's simply working with the energy that's already in our spaces because it is and making it work for us in the best way possible. You know, just work with what's there. Why fight it? That. <laughs> you know? that reminds me of when I first learned about yoga, just realizing that you can have, um, a Catholic nun that's also a yogi. Sure. You can have an atheist that's a yogi. And so what I'm hearing you say is feng shui is similar. It does feel like magic sometimes. It does. And I love that about it. Um, I, I mean, I see magic all the time, but when you, you don't really want to describe it that way because that can scare people off or they equate, some people will equate magic with witchcraft, you know? Right. So I just like to be very clear with that for people that, I mean, you are moving things around and you are doing things intentionally in your space to invite in positive energy into your home, which then benefits everyone in it. The other question I get asked a lot is like, well, I believe in it, but my husband doesn't, you know, so is it not going to work? And I'm like, no, it's going to work because if you're doing the work in your home, everybody, including the animals in your home will be affected by it. So mm -hmm. you don't need everyone to believe you know, if one person's on board and one person's doing the work that will benefit everyone in the space. Can you, I don't mean this to be offensive, so yeah. please correct me if it yeah. is, but can you, are there shortcuts to feng shui? Like if someone doesn't have the patience to do all the ceremonies and set up all the cures, are there hacks like feng shui hacks? Sure. I mean, you don't have to do, you know, you don't have to peel hundreds of oranges if that's not your jam. You can put nine oranges in a bowl in the center of your home or on your kitchen countertop and invite in abundance and prosperity that way. You know, will it differ? I don't know, to be honest with you, you know, but most of my clients are not going to spend hours and hours and hours every day doing stuff. So I try and give people, and that's why I created the card deck, because I kind of wanted to give people some simple, easy things so that people will do it. You know, if you make it too complicated, people will not want to do it. And Professor Lin's whole goal was to get everyone to do it. My teacher's goal and my goal and everyone, your husband's goal is for people to do it. So we want to make it accessible. And everything that you do in your home with intention is going to make a difference. You know, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be to that extreme if that's not your jam. If you love rituals, go for it. You know, I mean, absolutely go for it. But it, it can still bring in incredible abundance without that level of ritual if that's not your thing. Okay, so then that leads me to, we're talking about oranges sure. and abundance. Yep. A lot of my listeners are essential oil users. And we have learned that wild orange is the oil of abundance. So is there a way to combine your nine oranges on the table with maybe the wild orange and the diffuser? Diffuse it. Absolutely. It's what I put in my diffuser. I actually like a combination because I love doTERRA. Um, I do a combination of wild orange. Like I put like nine drops of each sometimes if I really need a little boost. Um, 
wild orange, or sometimes three drops of each, just depends on how I'm feeling. Uh, wild orange, bergamot, I love to mix that together. I love a little bit of lemon in there and I just let it go to town, you know? So the wild orange is bringing an abundance, the lemon is cleansing and the bergamot just smells amazing. <laughs> yeah. So and um, there is this, there's something about that number nine because I've heard you say it twice now. Number nine in feng shui. So three is a very auspicious number across the board. Like if you think of the Holy Trinity or you think of anything, oh, three is used a lot as a very auspicious number. So in feng shui, we use three and multiples of three for things. So we can do threes, we can do nines, we can do 27 things. Something I tell people, like if they're stuck and they just don't know where to start or I cannot get to them for a one-on-one -on -one consultation, let's say for a month or a month and a half, I'm like, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna do two things. You're gonna do a salt burn. And there's a million videos on my Instagram, as you know, about how to do a salt burn. So people can go there and see that. And after that, you're going to move 27 things around in your house because 27 is a multiple of three. So it's three times three times three, you know, so that shifts the energy immediately in a space until, you know, I can get there and move forward. So, yes, we do like to. And as a decorator, I like odd numbers as well. You know, I'm an interior designer and I have been for almost 20 years. So I like threes, fives, sevens. You know, I like odd numbers anyway. So the threes and the nines work really well for me. <laughs> Well, it's interesting because when you're blending essential oils together, you always want to blend at least three oils. Oh, I didn't know that. And so there's something about that too. Um, so I love that kind of like mystical aspects of, of numbers and the t moving 27 things around in your home. I think sometimes I do that naturally mm -hmm. when I want an energy shift. So it's really cool to think about how could I do that intentionally? And since we were touching on hacks, I'll give you a hack. If 27 seems just astronomical, like how am I going to find 27 things to move around? Here's what I do when I need to do it. And I, a, I don't have a lot of time or I just don't feel like rearranging, you know, stuff. Um, go to your silverware drawer, take everything out, put it all back in. You've probably already hit 27 there. If you have it, do the same thing with your cups, your plates, your mugs, anything like that will be a quick shift. You know, I'll just take out all my plates, line them up on the counter and stack them back up in a different way, you know? So it doesn't have to be this overwhelming, like, oh my God, I need to find places for all these things. Um, it can be that quick of a hack with the intention of I am doing this in order to shift the energy of the space. So as long as you put that intention in there first and then do it, you know, that, that will get you just as far. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So what I really want to talk about today is sure. abundance and wealth. Okay. Uh, I, I myself, and I'm sure my listeners want to know what can I do to feng shui my home or my office, my car, all the spaces so that I am a super attractor for abundance and wealth. Sure. Well, first step first, I always think um, that gratitude is essential for abundance so I would always suggest that everyone start their day, even if it's two minutes, and be grateful for what's already there. Because chances are most of us already have so much more than we even need. Granted, it may not be what we want, and we're all you know, guilty of that. There's always something else that we would like to have or another trip or whatever the case may be. But I truly, truly, before I get out of bed every morning, am grateful for what already is. Even if it was a crappy day the day before, you know, just find something even if you're just saying, you know, thank you for my family or thank you for my, the bed. I had a bed to sleep in tonight. Gratitude attracts gratitude and that attracts prosperity and that attracts abundance. You know, it all keeps bringing in when you're grateful what you have, the universe will bring you more. So I very strongly feel that that's the case. And then the other thing I want to address before we kind of get into specific feng shui is, is there is a difference between financial prosperity and abundance. And I like to teach people that I work with that. So financial prosperity is exactly that, more wealth. And wealth to every client means something different. You know, personally, wealth to me means money to go on lavish trips abroad because that's my jam, um, even here in the United States. But just to be able to go to some really beautiful places with my family, you know, we just spent two and a half weeks in Ireland for the holidays um, we're going to Italy in May, like that equals wealth to me, the ability to go and stay in a beautiful hotel and fly well and just do all of it. 
to somebody else, wealth might be a boat or their dream home. You know, it's a different thing to everybody. So get super intentional on what wealth means to you because that's the intention that you need to infuse into your home in order to achieve that. It may be a dream job. It may be, you know, whatever it is that wealth means to you. Uh, and that's financial prosperity. Abundance is more of everything good in your life. So, you know, having an abundance of love from your family, from your friends, from your pets, uh, abundance of health, you know, again, I mean, you can have all the wealth in the world and if you can't get out of bed, what good does it do you? So I just like to differentiate that so that people can get super clear about their intentions. I always differentiate that when I'm doing my prayers and meditating and all that too. And I say, you know, I welcome in financial prosperity and I welcome in abundance in all areas of my life. And I ask for enough so I can overflow to others because it's always good to not just have it be all about you, you know, and how can then I take all these that I'm gifted with and give to others. And that seems to be a super successful recipe to then move the gratitude around, move the energy around and just kind of shift. So with that done, we go to the front door because the front door is our mouth of chi in our home. And I'm sure that your front door is pristine if your husband is a feng shui consultant. Um, the front door is where everything starts. You can do all the work on the inside, but if you haven't done anything on the outside, think about you know, if, you're, if your mouth is sewn shut and you can't take in nourishment, well, it doesn't matter what's going on. Like if you can't take it in, you're not going to thrive. So you need to be able to take in nourishment through your mouth, through your front door to be able to have abundance, prosperity, wealth, all of that come through. So the front door is just a super important and the first place that I always tell people to start. What I want to see on a front door is I want to see it working properly. So so many consultations, I walk in and they're like, I'm stuck in my career. It feels stagnant. And of course I go to the door hardware. It doesn't work. It's sticking. And that is so common. I can't tell you. So the hardware has to work. It has to be in good shape. The door needs to be in good shape, whether it's painted or stained or however it is, the finish it is, make sure that it's not chipped and cracked and peeled and broken because that's saying that you're not inviting in the energy if, if that's the condition your door's in. Uh, check the light bulbs. When people tell me they're burnt out, I go look at their front light bulbs and then I'll walk around their house because burned out equals burned out bulbs a lot of times. I don't want to see dead and dying plants. I know that it's winter at the moment, so things may be frozen over, but this you can use when the timing is appropriate, depending on where you live. For us in Florida, I mean, I have to check them all the time, you know, because we always have plants growing. So you want to see vibrant plants. You want to see color out there. I love reds, oranges, and yellows by the front door personally, no matter what direction your front door is facing, because it attracts energy. So those vibrant colors really bring in some really good energy. Um, what else would be the front door? The mat, the doormat is a big one. So you want the doormat to be in good working shape. You want it to be nice. Uh, at the beginning of the year, January is always a great time to get a fresh doormat, just kind of welcome in the new year. And then I'll give you a little uh, abundance uh, cure that I teach my clients. You take a red envelope and you put nine coins, we're back to the nines. So you put nine coins in it. Um, I usually use quarters every once in a while because I'll change it out. You know, it's gonna get nasty after a while, so you wanna change it out. If I wanna attract international clientele, then I'll put maybe some international coins in there. I try and put them all heads up side, put them in the red envelope. I take my red envelope and then I put it in the Ziploc bag and seal it shut just because we get so much rain that otherwise it would get destroyed pretty quickly. And I put it under that doormat. And that is saying that I am inviting wealth into my home and prosperity. I check it every new moon. And if it's still in good shape, I'll leave it. If the envelope's getting kind of ratty, I'll just redo the whole thing. You know, I'll put my quarters back and take out some more quarters or whatever it is and redo it. So I just kind of keep an eye on it and make sure that it's in good shape. Another thing that I do every new moon, and I just choose a new moon because it's a time for new intentions and goal setting and welcoming in new energy. I take um, my doTERRA. It's so funny that you do doTERRA because I truly love it. I have so much of it. I take um, a 
a, whatever washcloth I'm going to use and I wipe down the front door. So I use water and then I do a few drops. You can do three, six or nine, whatever feels good to you that day of basil oil and the basil welcomes in prosperity in feng shui and rosemary oil because that brings in protection. So I like to use those and wipe the front door inside and out. And we do use our garage door a lot as well. Although I am um, super, super intentional and I open and use that front door at least once a day. And everyone should do that. Your front door should get used every day so that energy can come through. So even if you go through the garage and you do everything through the garage, at least go to your front door intentionally one time a day and open it, you know, and make sure it's not cluttered in the back, you know, behind it so that you can't open it. When people are telling me there's a lot of obstacles in their career, I normally find boxes and stuff piled up behind their front door, you know, because sometimes it's just that. And the reason I use the front door with career is because on the Baba map, career lines up right with your front door. So I'll talk about the Baba in a second so people know what I'm saying. But I would do the same routine to your garage door if that is your main entry every day. You know, wipe it down, make sure it's in good shape. You know, all the things that we just talked about, I would do it at both of the entry points of your home with focus on the front door, of course. Cool. I'm excited yeah. to go refresh our front door. I've put some of these notes in the show notes for everybody okay. so that you can do that. Um, we have an interesting thing in our front door passageway where our wellhead is actually right in line with our front door. And then on the other side of our front door, we have these big picture windows. Ooh. So our, our feng shui practitioner, my husband's teacher, had us hang yes. um, a prism in that window. A feng shui crystal mm -hmm, to As diffuse the energy of the well. And because I saw a huge difference. I really did. Yeah. Um, she was, said something like, do you just have money coming in and flying out? Yes. Yeah. And it, yes, we were like, yes. <laughs> so this stuff really works and it's it does. fun. I does. I noticed when people tell me like, if I'm, if I'm going to go do a consultation, I mean, and I'm sure he's the same way. I've gotten to the point where I walk in and if I see a fireplace in the wealth area, I'm like, so do you burn through money? Money comes in, but it's burning up. Oh, how did you know? You know, then they think we're magic. I'm like, no, I can just tell you because, and you know, this is what we can look at the Bagua, right? So the careers here, your wealth is right here. So if I see a fireplace anywhere in this area of the home, I'm like, let's talk what's going on. <laughs> you know. Um, so it is, it's, it's an amazing practice and it's, you find patterns for a reason, you know, they're there, they're there for a reason. So, um, a, a, but a water feature in your front is a very auspicious thing. If you can put a water feature with moving water, that's moving towards you and towards the home, or even if it's a fountain, like here, I couldn't put it directly in front of our door, but it's right off to the side. And my intention was prosperity coming into the home. So I chose a round water feature with the with the water dribbling down all sides. So there is water coming towards the house. So, you know, not every house is perfectly laid out like a square, like the Bago map, you know, and not every front yard allows you to put a water feature directly in front of the front door. So you have to work with what's there. And that's why you call a consultant, right? Because that's what we've all been trained to do is to figure out those things that uh, are not quite as simple as some other ones may be. Do you feel like everything can be fixed or do you ever have a situation with a client where you're like, you need a new house? <laughs> the only thing that um, even my teacher feels is, is the toughest one to fix. And thankfully, I've never had to deal with it. I, I hope I don't. Um, I've had two and I'll tell you the second one. So the first one is a spiral staircase in the center of the home. Hmm. That's a pretty serious one. There are things you can do to help. You can put a plant behind it to kind of give some stability, but the center of the home is your health area. So to have something spiraling that's gonna take the energy up in a chaotic way, because a lot of spiral staircases don't have risers, you know, it's just the tread. Um, it's not good for it. Generally, you'll find that there's some health issues in the home. Let's just put it that way. You know, I don't really say good feng shui or bad feng shui, but there can be more challenging energy and less challenging, you know? So that's a tough one. Thankfully, I've never come across it myself. I've studied it. 
Um, one that I did come across that I, there's no shame in my game. If I don't know how to fix it, I will call on her or I will have her tell me who to talk to. We had, uh, I had a client, where was she? I want to say New Hampshire because it was a virtual and they built their bedroom. They just bought this house. So they didn't do it, but somewhere along the line in this house that they bought, the master bedroom was built on top of a dried well. And she's like, what do I do with this? I'm like, I don't know. That doesn't feel good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it feels like a gaping hole sucking energy down and it's dry. So that doesn't feel good either. I'm like, I don't know. I'm not sure what to do. So, you know, there's no shame in my game. I call my teacher and she's like, she needs a dowser. She needs somebody to go and douse the property. And I'm like, okay. So that's what I went back to her with, you know, and then we worked on the rest of the house. But, you know, you are going to come across things that you're just, not familiar with there's always something new and there's always a new situation so if I don't know I ask and I find out so that's all we can do right because it's so great it's like oh. entrepreneurs need a business coach I feel like most entrepreneurs need some kind of healer oh. and they need a feng shui practitioner is what we're <laughs> learning it's and there's always something new to learn you know I mean I'm always learning and I'm always taking you know continuing education courses and trying to work uh, with different people just to learn different points of view because there's always so much to be learned it's such a layered practice that I think till the day I choose to which I don't see that happening I will be able to learn till the day I die on this one you know and that's why I chose biophilic design as my next certification because it ties in with feng shui beautifully and it's about bringing in more nature and, and the outdoors in, and not just plants, but in different ways and in how you, the furniture you pick, the designs and all that, because it really does make a difference to our health and well-being. Mm, you know? I love that. Yeah. So help us understand this little card that you're holding up, the Bagua, uh, the bagua. is that right? So here's the Bagua, and this comes from my card, my Feng Shui card deck. So this comes in here. But if people um, don't want to buy a deck, you can also get this for free on my website. You can just go to my website, which I know you'll put in the show notes, um, and just download it. It just says free Bible map. It's just a gift. So you can do that. And you were talking about feng shui the car. I downloaded several of my own Bible maps <laughs> off the website, laminated them so they wouldn't get nasty, and put one under the driver's side of my car with the career area facing me. So if I'm sitting here, it lines up, you know, it's gonna line up this way if I'm sitting right here under my floor mat. So you can feng shui your car by doing that. And I have one in my desk drawer as well, lined up with me. So I'm sitting at my desk right now. So lined up underneath um, my desk drawer with the career area facing out. So those are just two like little side notes that you can do for yourself in your office space uh, and in your car. and the beauty of a Bagua map is that it can be applied to any horizontal surface. So you can do your home, you can do your property, you can do your desk, you can do your nightstand, you can do a room. You know, when we had our second home out in Sedona, um, out west, at least where we were, it was all about the views, right? The mountain views. So there were very few homes shaped like this. Everything was shaped in all these crazy angles to show that each room had like the best picture window view you know possible and you have all the gorgeous mountains and I appreciated that but um applying the Bagua map was a bit more challenging you know because you ended up having all these crazy empty spaces and stuff so in that case what you would do is you'd apply the Bagua map to each room and you'd line up the career with the doorway to that room the main doorway to that room and then you'd work out from there so what the Bagua map is, it is, uh, I'm trying to get it so you can see it and not have too much of a glare. So it is a tool that we as BTB feng shui practitioners use, and it divides the home into nine, the main nine energy spaces of your home. So you have a career, which way am I going to go? Skills and knowledge. You have family, you have wealth, you have fame and reputation. And I always like to clarify this one because people are like, well, what if I don't want to be famous? It has nothing to do with being famous unless that's what you want. This is about how you are viewed in business. So for entrepreneurs and people who work at home and are running a home business or any business, you know, directly across from where you're sitting on your desk is your fame and reputation area. That is a place where you can have a candle or you can have something representative of fire because fire is the element there. 
to enhance how you are seen in business. Um, and in your home, you know, same thing, how you're seen in the world by others. So it doesn't necessarily have to translate to business if that is not something that works for you. Uh, love and relationships is up here. And that includes all relationships, not just intimate ones, but relationships with people. Children and creativity is right here. And that's in white. And that again is not just having children and birthing children, but like for me, I I've been done birthing children for a while. It was about birthing my book. So I focused on my, my children and creativity area as I was creating the book and the card deck. Then travel and helpful people, which is beautiful because that's my office. So who doesn't want to have helpful people in their office, right? Back to career. And then in the center, touching everything is health. So that's kind of how it's divided. So when I walk into a home, based on what people are telling me is going on, you know, I kind of will find my way to that little area as we're talking about with the fireplace and the wealth area. If they're telling me money comes in, but it's just, it just burns up. Well, let's go see what's going on in that area, you know, or if somebody's telling me there's a lot of hip problems, a lot of joint problems, actually that's also related to the wealth area. So mm -hmm. I'll go take a look at that. There are body parts that are aligned with all of these areas too. And that's the really cool thing about this map is that it helps you as a practitioner be a detective and kind of be able to see, well, what is out of balance? Um, and I know everyone, since we're talking about wealth, everyone's going to want to just go work on this area. What I like to remind everyone of is you need it all to work together, you know, so don't ignore the rest of your home. Certainly you can highlight this, but if you don't have skills and knowledge, how are you going to attain wealth? If you don't have helpful people, how are you going to attain wealth? You need clients, you need customers, you need guides, you need coaches, teachers, you need people in your life to help you attain wealth. Nobody just creates it out of nothing by themselves in a vacuum. If you don't have health, how are you going to create wealth? So they all very much work together. And I really like to encourage people to kind of look at it as a whole. So that's another thing I did with my deck. Um, the deck has 77 cards. And by the time you're done going through all the cards, you've touched every area of your house, your garage, and your garden. If you have an outdoor space, it's got stuff for outdoor space too, because it all works together. You know, it just makes sense to do it all at once and, and kind of touch. And you can focus on what you need to focus on, but you really have to think about everything as a whole, as a whole being. I can't wait to get your card done. Yeah. I'm going to go buy it right after this. So it's on yeah. You can buy it through me, you know, through my website or they're on Amazon next to the book. So it makes it easy. I like to make it super easy for everyone. So cool. Is that your recommendation? Like if somebody's listening to this right now <laughs> and they want to start working on their house, would you say get the card deck first and kind of go at it their own? Or is it a one-on-one -on -one consultation that would be better? I would say it, it's completely up to the individual. You know, some people just want someone to come in and tell them what to do. Um, actually that's what I did. Uh, I had, I, I hired who then became my teacher, um, because a friend of mine was doing it too. And we're just like, ah, we'll just do it together. I had no idea. She had a book that was in nine languages. She was world renowned and she was famous. I just said, yes. But as we know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And she told me within 10 minutes of being in my house, she was, you know, you're going to be doing this for a living. And I'm like, yeah, 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 lady, just tell me what I need to do. You know, <laughs> it's like, so I said, no. You know, and then here I am. Um, she was right. She was right. Wow. And she's amazing. Um, I love her. Karen Rock Carter. She's just a, an amazing human being. Um, I would say it just go with your gut, whatever feels good to you. You know, if you're not ready for a one-on-one -on -one consultation, try the card deck. That might be enough for you. If you are a go-getter and you are willing to do the work and you feel confident about being able to use the Bagua and go room by room and do your stuff, have at it. You know, just use the card deck and see how far you get. Uh, it might be all you need. If if you just are like, no, I can't even make sense of this, then certainly I would say a one-on-one -on -one consultation would be where to start. And, you know, I do them virtually and I do them in person, depending on where you are. Um, and then, you know, you just take whatever recommendations I give you and go for it. <laughs> Some people here locally throughout Tampa and Florida 
uh, because I am a designer as well, you know, they'll hire me to also do the implementing. If they're going to redo a room and they want it all done with feng shui or a new home or whatever, you know, then I do the consultation and then I go into hourly rates after that. But that's really just kind of around here. It gets kind of cost prohibitive if I have to be flown somewhere over and over to do the design part of it for someone else. But here it's not a big deal. So. Oh, yeah. If you, I can imagine if you're going to redecorate your house with a designer, you might as well have them be feng shui educated yeah or at least have a consultation i've had this several times where someone's already hired a designer or they're not local right but i will have the consultation with the designer and the client and then i will throw in my recommendations and then sometimes the designer will get back to me and be like okay so i found this piece how does this work sure you know so there's so many different ways of working together um, without you know stepping on anyone's toes you know, and it's it's always best if people are, are building a home, it's nice to get in and be able to see what the builder has done and make adjustments before the house is built so that you're not having to do those afterwards. You know, it's really lovely to get to see at the blueprint stage where we can tweak things and just have it in better space from the beginning. Yeah, I, I think anyway, I, I like love work. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, it's work. great that you do the virtual consultations so somebody can have you you go on zoom and video around to their house or something yes, i just did one um for a lovely tennis player uh in monaco a couple of weeks ago i mean new hampshire so yeah all, all over okay great yeah. well we're gonna put everything in the show notes so look for the aromatherapy blend are we calling that a feng shui blend is it a prosperity blend do you want prosperity blend i think that would be a prosperity blend okay so we've got a prosperity blend for you in the show notes we have that fun front door abundance cure and you're going to have alejandra's website her instagram her oracle deck and her book and please if you've been listening to this episode and you have thought of someone who needs to hear about this <laughs> a screenshot, share it, and tag both of us on Instagram. Yeah. I'm Jasmine and Juniper Living and Alejandra G. Brady Lifestyled on Instagram. It's all in the show notes. We want to hear from you and your gluten-free, dairy-free recipes too. Yes, I always need new ones. <laughs> and let's all go do our front door. I think I'm going to go work on that today. It you know what else would be great for your front door before we sign off? Um, obsidian and black tourmaline are great stones. If you want to put some stones of protection out by your front door, I put them in my planters. You can always add those as well. Just another little front door to kind of really zhuzh it all up. Ooh, that's so cool. I have to tell you a quick story. My husband yeah. was digging holes to pour concrete in our front area and mm -hmm. he came across an obsidian. No. Big. And it is at our front door right now. So we got one gift wow. from our land. Absolutely. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, that just gave me chills. That is so good. I love that. It was it was so cool. So we may have to have you back for a whole crystal episode. Oh that's yeah. I mean it's a whole other subject. Crystals, it's, I mean, that's there's so many avenues with feng shui and that's the beauty of it that there's so many different things and avenues you can go. So yeah, I mean I'm a certified crystal healer for that reason. Not because I touch people, I don't do any hands-on healing. It's all about what crystals to bring into your space for what reason, you know, and that work with your decor. You can see mine, that's from Sedona. That's a oh, that's hand. beautiful. Here's what's all oh, that quartz. Yes. When I do my podcasts, love it. We love crystals over here too. Oh, they do. I have them all through my bra. I actually created Brashway and um, I, I sell those too. They're kits that are Brashway, Karshway, Sleep Shway, and Pocket Shway for the gentlemen. So oh, they perfect. Hey, if you're a lady, <laughs> if you're a lady and you like crystals and you don't have any in your bra, I don't know what's going on because it's a perfect place for them. One, two, three there's at least three I can feel right now I can't remember how many I popped in there this morning but at least three that <laughs> is so there. awesome I want to I want to hear from all the ladies who do the bra crystal shui <laughs> it's so fun oh Alejandra it was so fun to, to chat with you I feel really inspired and I'm sure everyone listening feels the same so thank you for taking time with us today oh you're so welcome thanks for having me
And to the listeners, thank you for listening. Please give us a five-star rating on Apple. That's how we get the podcast out and about. And we will talk to you next time. Bye, everybody.